better day, we we'll live a better life. In the name of Jesus, I pray.
Can the remainder of the servant hand up the book? God bless you, gentlemen. Thank you. Come on, let's give God a praise.
after service was yesterday at the Lord Baptist Church uh, in Deanwood. Every seat was occupied. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful experience uh, to see that someone we love so much was loved by, loved and respected by so many uh, people. Um, Second of St. Paul, you showed up, and I thank you for that. I'm so proud to be a member of this church. Well, the Williams family thanks you, and we'll continue to pray for Pastor Kitchen and this church. I will now meet the God of Arts for attending church service. Everyone attending Sunday school and Sunday worship service must be vaccinated. The Franklin Street Bill will be the only entrance and exit. When entering the church, each person must wear a face mask for the duration of the Sunday school and worship service and must keep it on until they exit the building. Each person will have their temperature checked at the door. If it is higher than 100.4, entrance will be denied. Hand sanitizer will be available on entry and administered to each person. Once inside the church, members and guests must not venture beyond the main vestibule, first floor restrooms, and sanctuary. The Crystal Room and Cafeteria Kitchen and Education Center will be off limits to everyone. No one is allowed upstairs except for the trustees. Sunday school class will begin promptly at 9.15 in the sanctuary and will end at 10.15. This will be the only class available in the church. We recommend you arrive by 9 o'clock. Any personal communication with Pastor Benjamin must be done by note or be made a call by the phone number if his number is listed in the book. Social distancing guidelines of six feet or more must be followed. The back of each pew is marked with the tape. The tape represents one seat. People who live together may sit together as distancing is not required. Until further notice, all services will be made modified and streamlined. The motion will begin promptly at 10 20. Service will begin at 10 30. We recommend the walk by 10 o'clock. Not more than five choir members per walk will be allowed. During selections, only the choir members are to sit. There will be one offer for your convenience, offer on the works that will be placed behind each pew. Offerings must be placed in an offering envelope. Members will be asked that you complete the envelope with your name, member number, date, of designated offerings, and amount. If you need to use more than an envelope, you may do so. Ushers will not pass around offering medicines. Members and guests must follow social distancing guidelines to the pie box where they may place their envelopes. Missionary offerings are placed in an offering basket held by a trustee. Uh, during altar call, members and guests must stand, remain in their feet, and pray. During the whole community, the covenant will be admitted. Members and guests must follow social distancing guidelines as they process to the community table to pick up their own community cup. Use community cups to be placed in cup holders behind the feet. At the end of the service, ushers will direct the congregation from the sanctuary. Everyone must enter the sanctuary immediately following the service. Once again, it's so good to see everyone have a great week.
just made mention of. Amen. Some of us in our eighties, some of us in our seventies, some of us may be in our nineties. Amen. The Lord has been blessing a long time. And he ain't got time yet, huh? Let's give the Lord some more hands. Raise up again. Raise his hands. Raise his hands. What a wonderful God we serve. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be honored. Certainly he's worthy to be praised. Let us, let us this summer be careful in this summer heat. And when we shop, let us shop prayerfully, asking God protection. Asking God for protection from some fanatical person with a gun. Uh, well, you don't know anymore, but you go shopping in some of these uh, shopping malls, some of these stores, you don't know what's going to take place. We just have to pray. Some people feel like the only time you need to pray is when you get in your car behind that steering wheel. And when you go shopping nowadays, you have a lot of people, you need to pray. You need to pray each and every time you leave your house, you need to pray because you don't know. We're living in a dangerous day and age. A dangerous day and age. Instead of things getting better, things are getting worse. And then with all of the disrupting events, of turmoil that's taken place in our American society. Let us pray for the very soul of this country. Amen. Let us be mindful of that. Let us pray for the democracy of this country, that it will remain a democracy. Let us pray, let us pray for the very soul of this country. So much has taken place with so many, you know, that's trying to destroy what this church I mean, what this country was founded upon. And we need to be mindful of that. We need to be mindful of that. It should, it should bother us. This, this country was founded on Christian principles. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and that seem, that, that's not a point now where it seems to be disrupted. It seems to be disrupted by so many. We, we watch the news and we know what's on the news and we, we know who's guilty of doing all of these things. And we need to pray. You see what I'm saying? Because you got to understand that Satan has used one man and he has sowed a lie into the soil of, the, of what this country stands for. And that, and that lie, the seed of that lie has germinated and it has, it has, it has sprung forth and it's bearing fruit in the hearts and minds of so many. That lie is not dead yet. We, we have to be aware of this. And don't let's just say, oh, well, you know, no, 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 no. Pray that God will combat Satan in this area. Pray that God will combat because God is able. God has all power. You see what I'm saying? And we got to take in consideration. There's a lot that can be produced from that one line that's going to be harmful to this country as well as harmful to us. Amen. Well, you know, we as an African-American people, we are on the bottom of the totem pole. Amen. So let us be mindful of that. Let us pray that the Lord will bless with his might. Let us pray for Biden. Let us pray for all of those who want to stand up for what's right. All of those who wants to stand up and tell the truth. Amen. And let us remember not forget that all of God's churches, let us pray that all of God's churches will return to normal in God's own way at his own time. Let us be mindful of that as well. Also, I would like to announce that in view of the funeral services this coming Saturday, there will be some permitted adjustments. Amen. There will be some permitted adjustments for this funeral. Amen. Let us pray much for the bereaved and families. We know that uh, death has invaded the family circles of several families. And we do know that God is able to heal. God is able to help family members overcome the heartbreak, the bereavement, the sorrow, and the pain. He's able because he has all power in his hands. Let's give the Lord some hands, please. Praise the Lord. We believe this is all the announcements that we have. If there are 
any other announcements that you'd like to have made, and ask that you please pass them to the pulpit by way of a note. And at this time, we're going to prepare and make ready for the lifting of our offering, just as we do every Sunday around this time. Amen. Let us be mindful to continue to give to our church. For we do know that the Lord has need of our financial support. Brother Stewart has the basket for you. Missionary offering, regular morning offering. And also, Brother Scott McKenzie standing behind the offering. The offering that I trust that we can give liberally and give generously. For the Lord loveth the church of giver. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. We have more work here in our church that has to be done, more repair work that has to be done. So let us be mindful of all of what we have yet to do and all of what we have yet to do. Amen. Oh, 
Oh God, we know that you're everywhere at the same time. Yes. God, you're here, you're in Europe, you're in Africa, you're all over the world. Yes, God, where there is a need for you, yes, pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, you move by your power yeah. and have your way. Yeah. God, we pray that thou would just move as never before. Mm. There's a need for your presence yes, yes, yes. everywhere. My Lord. Pray that thou would just have your way, Lord. Yeah, your way. In the name of Jesus. Bless our pastor in the name of Jesus. Touch his mind, touch his spirit. Yes, Lord. God, give us a word that's going to edify us, oh God, and fortify us, that we may go forth and share what we've learned oh, yes, oh, yes. in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my Lord. Bless all the associate ministers here yes. in the name of Jesus. Bless the deacon, Lord, in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my Lord. Bless the missionary in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Bless the entire house right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, then, Lord, when it's all said and done, and we can't come this way no more, pray that thou would give us a home in thy kingdom. We'll be able to praise your name forever. This we ask in no other name but the name of the all name, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And all the people of God say, Amen. 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 That's something into the service today. One writer said, I don't know what you come to do, but I come praise the Lord. Amen. I trust you have come to praise the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto his name. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. I love the old hymns of the church. The song says, Oh, pass me not, oh, gentle Savior, in my home.
I'm another that I want to call it. Do not pass the door. Amen. Do not pass the door. Every head bowed at this hour. Once more again, that a few of your handmade servants come with that mind of divine presence. We come, Lord God, belonging to you and you belonging to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the relationship that we have with you. We thank you to know, Mr. Father, that you've blessed us, you've kept us, you've preserved us. But above all, Lord, you have saved us. And we're grateful for that. We thank you for another day that you've allowed us to see with our own eyes, experience with our own living. We thank you, Lord God, all that you have done for us over the many years of our being in existence. We thank you. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon our church, not only our church, but all churches, Lord God. For your blessings, but we follow upon the people, Lord God, who are on the membership roll, Lord. We realize, Lord God, that things have been distorted to some degree because of this pandemic. But, Lord, we know you're able in your own way, in your own time, you'll work things out. I pray now, Lord, you look on me as I stand before your people with the assignment of sharing with them your word. Pray, Lord God, that you would empty me of self, fill me full of yourself, and enable me to preach and declare, Master Father, your word as you would have me to declare it. Bless the waiting congregation, I pray that you would enable them, Merciful Father, to listen to more than just a year, but enable them to listen with their hearts. I pray, Father God, to allow your word to serve as good seed, falling upon the fertile soil of our hearts and minds. I pray to allow it to take root, Lord God, and grow to bring you glory, praise, and honor. Now, Lord, I pray that you would just bless us as only you can, from your word, through your word, and by your word. This we ask in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Those of you who have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Acts, the 20th chapter. And we want to look at verses 22, 23, and 24. Acts, the 20th chapter, we want to look at verses 22, 23, and 24. Where you will find these words. And now, Behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, except that they, the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I said, now before I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the thing that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I want to talk briefly from this title, A Jumpstart, Your 
predicament with your jumpstart your predicament with joy. That's a long title, but y'all got a pen, a pen and pencil, y'all can write. Amen. Jumpstart your predicament with joy. After you finish writing, look at your neighbor. I hope you've spoken to him already. <laughs> Start talking to them if you haven't spoken to them. Look at your next door neighbor and say, Jump start. Jump start. Your, predicament your predicament with joy. With joy. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Pray with me if you will. Have you ever been down in the dumps? Have you ever been down, really down in the dumps? But the question, but the question is asked, what is it, what is it uh, that brings a person out of their slump? Yes, 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 no doubt for some, it may be exercise, the kind of exercise that makes one sweat and pant. But there is a different kind of exercise that I recommend is when you, as the child of God, is feeling as low as one can possibly feel. And we know that there's a lot of things in life that can bring you to that point where you are feeling as low as life can make you feel. Yes, 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 yes. Well, my beloved, this is when you should exercise your right as a saint belonging to the master to, to gain deliverance. Yeah. First Timothy 4 and 7 says, exercise thyself unto godliness. And you see, church, that alone can jumpstart your predicament with the joy of the Lord. All right. All right. Paul made mention of joy in the text. Now, now reason with me, if you will, for I'm sure you've had at least one occasion when you had to jumpstart your car. Batteries, you know, will drain down over a period of time. And if your finance doesn't enable you to purchase a new one, you may just have to jumpstart. Are y'all gonna pray with me? And the same is true of your faith. As you live, facing life difficulties upon uh, yourself. You'll find yourself in need of a faith jumpstart. Yeah. But you see, uh, there are warning signs along the way that let you know your spiritual battery is running low. Warning signs, warning signs such as maybe you're tempted to sleep in on Sunday morning. Are you too tired at night to pray before bed? Are you dwelling too much on your problems instead of counting your many blessings? Or maybe your attitude toward the church has changed? Or maybe your participation and support of the church has changed? But these are the red flags that indicate that something is terribly wrong. But these are signs registering in your earthly mind that your spiritual batteries need recharging. Talk to me, somebody. They need, they need, they need recharging so that you can jumpstart your joy in the midst of your predicament, whatever the nature of that predicament might be. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah. For you see, no one had a better excuse to be in a spiritual slump than the Apostle Paul. For he was beaten many times with 40 stripes. He was shipwrecked. And in many of his journeys, he was in danger by his own countrymen. He suffered much weariness and painfulness and hunger, cold and nakedness. But he did not let any of this stop him. For in Philippians 4 11, Paul said, I have learned he said, I've learned 
I've learned myself. I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Are y'all going to pray with me? He was determined to finish his course. He was headed to Jerusalem because our text said he was bound in the spirit to finish what he started. And should this not be our commitment as a Christian to finish what we started out doing for the Lord? Are y'all going to pray with me? We promise, we promise, we promise to abide in Christ. We promise to walk with Christ. Be obedient to Christ. Trust Christ. And be devoted to Christ. So when you feel yourself slipping, when you feel yourself slipping, uh, may I recommend three areas of your commitment to Christ. Stay with me now. Talk to me somebody. Now, 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 my beloved, uh, three, re three uh, things that I would like to recommend to you, you know, for your commitment to Christ, that you may need to jumpstart. First of all, you may need to jumpstart your quest for peace. I'm quite sure you will agree with me that you can't get very much done if you don't have peace. Talk to me somebody. Having peace of mind, trying to deal with whatever you have to deal with in life. It means a whole lot. Talk to me somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? And, and yes, we all no doubt are guilty of defining peace a bit differently. For some of us, peace is when all of our bills are paid. For others, it's when we get a, a good report from the doctor. For our students, it might be a high grade point average or an A on all of our final exams. Yeah. But these different kinds of peace, just mentioned, they are fleeting. They pass away with time. But you know, trials keeps right on coming. Right. Are y'all going to pray with me? I said trials keeps right on coming. Yes, yeah, somebody's sitting up in here today. The, uh, the day is experienced no doubt a trial in your life. Talk to me somebody. Talk to me somebody, are y'all gonna pray? Maybe that's why you're here in the church today because you are experiencing a trial in your life. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yes, yes, I said there's trials. They keep right on coming. Yes, yes, trials of one kind or another has plagued our society. And it's true, my beloved, that nowadays there is very little meaning to marriage vows. Very little meaning uh, to marriage vows, very little respect for the property of others, yeah. as well as very little respect for each other. Because many are being massacred within our society. Every time you turn around, somebody else has done been massacred. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? Within our U.S. of A., laws are being ignored. Authority is being rejected. Justice is being trampled. Freedom is being insulted. Rights are being abused. Integrity is being denounced. And the Ten Commandments are being mocked. Oh, yes. But you see, Paul had a unique peace for his trials. Oh, yes, he did. Paul had a unique peace for his trials. For the kind of peace that Paul highly recommended that you need is that peace that passes all understanding. That's the kind of peace that Paul had. Oh, yes, it was. But how interesting it is to know that the peace that Paul had wasn't deterred because of what unseen obstacles that lie ahead of him. Because his peace was found in his sufficient faith in Christ. But when trouble came, when trouble came, he knew how to rest peacefully, being sustained by the grace of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was on one missionary trip, it was on one missionary trip that Paul told the Philippians, be careful for nothing, which means don't worry about nothing. And let me just add that much of what we worry about, we can't do nothing about it no more. But Jesus can. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? That's why Paul went on to say, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
In other words, when you feel yourself slipping into, when you feel yourself slipping away into unbridled anxiety, pray. That's what you do is pray. And leave your troubles. Leave your heartaches and your soul aches and your emotional hindering aches of the past as well as the future. Leave them all at the altar. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the indwelling Holy Spirit, detach yourself, disconnect yourself, and walk through life, not as a victim, but walk as a victor. Talk to me somebody. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And y'all gonna pray with me? Oh yes we are, we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. And you see, Paul is saying, if we are able to do this, then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well, you see, my beloved, the peace that Christ gives you will carry you through any situation. It may be the loss of a loved one. It may be a, 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 a severe spell of illness. Talk, it may be a heartbreak or a heartache. Talk to me, somebody. Whatever it is. Yes, whatever it is. Yes, the peace that Christ will give you will carry you through any situation. He'll give you rest from the pressures and emotional distortions of life delivered. When trouble comes, when trouble comes knocking on the door of your life, answer that door with faith and prayer and you'll find tranquility with Christ. But when trials linger, leaving you feeling like you have been in the deepest part, in the darkest part of the valley, too long, grab hope to faith and prayer with a tight grip to God's hand and see of Christ. Won't let you know for yourself that you are being sustained by Him. It's a beautiful thing to know you're being sustained by the Lord. Talk to me, somebody. Sometimes you may go to you may you, you may find yourself going to bed depressed. Talk to me, somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? And you pray, Lord, move this feeling of depression. Move this feeling of and the Lord will let you sleep through the night and early the next morning he'll allow you to wake up and something is going to let you talk to me, somebody. You feel a little stronger, you feel a little better, you feel like you can live on and go on a little further. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. Yes, somebody here know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. He'll let you know that, 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 that you're being sustained by him. Yes, regardless to how overwhelming and painful our trials may be, we must continue to do what, Richard? Embrace the promise of Jesus. Jesus made us a promise. And we must always remember and never forget that Jesus promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Mother may leave us. Father may leave us. Children may leave us. Our spouse may leave us. Our best friends may leave us. But Jesus made a promise. And in one way of speaking, he was saying, regardless to who else might leave, you can rest assured that he would never leave. Yes, he made that promise. Yes, he did. And surely we are glad, we are glad, we're so glad that he made that promise because where could we go but to the Lord seeking a refuge for our soul, needing a friend to help us in here. Tell me where else could we go but to the Lord. When trouble comes, I go to the Lord. Talk to me somebody. Y'all can pray with me. Secondly, secondly, you need to jumpstart your potential. Well, you see, you see, I said you need to jumpstart your potential. You see, all of us are unique in our own way. And we all have value in the kingdom of God. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of people may not think too much of you. Talk to me somebody. They may speak harsh words against you and about you. Talk to me somebody. They may keep your name in the midst of gossip. Talk to them in a negative way. But I come to tell you that you have value in the kingdom, regardless of what people say about you. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, we have value in the kingdom of God. Yeah. But it's imperative that we forsake, forsake that humanistic feeling that may have some of us 
feeling worthless or useless. So therefore, we the saints of God need to explore the God-given talents and gifts that we should have, providing they haven't already revealed themselves and made us unique and obedient workers for the kingdom. But if we are still in the dark about our God-given gifts and talents, then fervent praying and serious seeking for them should be part of the spiritual order for our living. Amen. Oh, yes, it should. Oh, you see, Paul, Paul knew the worth. Oh, yes, he did. Paul knew his worth. He knew his worth. First of all, he was a tent maker. He was a witness. He was a preacher. He spoke several languages and was highly educated in Jewish law and customs. And he was able to put all of those assets to good use on his mission trips. Well, you see, there is no such thing as a believer that God cannot use, at least for something. Talk to me something, y'all don't pray with me. You may not be able to, to preach like Paul, sing like angels, or even testify like Esther, but the Lord can still use you, at least for something. Talk to me something, y'all don't pray with me. And you see, every one of us is a part of a whole. Every one of us is a part of a whole. You may say, what do you mean by that, preacher? We are many members in one body. And it takes many diverse gifts and talents for the church to reveal the word of God, to shine the righteousness of God, and illuminate the will of God. For we must remember and not forget that we are the what? Salt of the earth. And we must make sure that the salt that has been invested in us as Christians hasn't lost its savor. Talk to me somebody. Well, now you may say, preacher, how can we put this to the test? And a good way to put it to test is to check within yourself to see if you need to jumpstart your love for your enemy. Talk to me somebody. If yeah, you may be in need to jumpstart your forgiveness to the one that has wronged you. Talk to me somebody. There's a whole lot of folk in the church walking around. Talk to me somebody. Going to and fro. Talk to me somebody. That's having all against somebody for years. And haven't gotten over it yet. Talk to me somebody. You need to jumpstart your forgiveness. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all going to pray with me? Until you forgive whoever. Talk to me somebody. God don't hear your prayers. Are y'all going to pray with me? Somebody give me the hear Yes, 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 yes. Maybe, maybe you need to jumpstart your, 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 your reluctancy to witness to the unsaved or your hesitancy to become more involved in the work of the Lord or your neglect of studying God's Word. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all going to pray with me? And if there is a saint, I said, and if there is a saint that is unaware of the role that you are to play in the Lord's grand scheme of worldwide evangelism, then be informed. It starts in your own backyard. If you desire real joy, I'm not talking about the joy that the many family casinos might bring you, providing they don't rob you first at those gambling tables and those one on bands. Talk to me, somebody. Well, you see, there are some of us, no doubt. They come, and you may go to a casino with a little bit of your own money, thinking that you're going to leave with more than a pocket full of the casino's money. Talk to me, somebody. But you end up leaving, you end up leaving there. Uh, with a few dollars that you brought, talk to me somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not joy. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah, that's sadness. Talk to me somebody. And it might even be madness. Talk to me for some of you. Talk to me. Are y'all gonna pray with me? You go in there smiling. But you come out of the front. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Got your hands in your pocket and ain't nothing in it but dust. Talk to me somebody. And let talk, talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Now, now, now I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the devil's joy. No, no, I'm talking about real joy that comes from above. Because it's the joy of the Lord. Yes, 
if you desire to discover who you are in Christ, simply because you may not yet know, jumpstart your potential by discovering those hidden assets that you have not yet used for the Lord. When you finally get around to executing these things in your life through faith and prayer, you are bound to be able to jumpstart your joy in the Lord. Your value and your worth will begin to maximize out for kingdom building. Finally, my beloved, you need to jumpstart your, your purpose by being a busy believer. Put your newfound potential to work by spreading the gospel with more than just the words of your mouth, but also by witnessing and by missionary work yeah, from your helping hands. For there, but you see, my beloved, these talents that you have are useless if you sit down on your salvation and put it in the recess mode. Yeah. Are y'all gonna pray with me? There's a whole lot of people who are sitting down on their salvation and have put it in the recess mode. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Yeah. Now realize that during this pandemic, a lot of us are having a vacation from the church. Talk to me somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Some of us done gained some extra weight because we've been doing a lot of what? Sitting down on our salvation. Are y'all gonna pray with me? I know I'm right about it. Talk to me somebody. I know I'm right about it. I know somebody may not want to hear this, but it's the truth. Yeah. Well, you see, you see, those talents you have are useless if you sit down on your salvation and put it in the recess mode. Talk to me somebody. Right. Well, you see, Paul could have, the reason with me, Paul could have tried to sit down on his salvation and the preaching of the word, but he could have thought about Jeremiah in the Old Testament, attempted to do that. You all remember Jeremiah? Right. Jeremiah was unsuccessful in doing that because the unpreached word that was inside of him was like fire. Shut up in his bones. Talk to me somehow. Y'all gonna pray with me? See, when you don't do right by your church, when you don't do right by the Lord, something inside of it, talk to me, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, talk to me, begin, begin to affect your mind, talk to me somehow. Begin to affect your conscience, talk to me somehow. That you know you ought to do better than this. Talk to me somebody. Y'all gonna pray with me? That's why some of you are here this morning. Talk to me somehow. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Holy Spirit been working with you. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Talk to me somebody. I know somebody don't want to hear this. Yes, I know somebody don't want to hear, but there ain't nothing wrong with the truth that a stand tall all by itself. Yes, 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 yes. It was like fire. Shut up in his bone. You see what I'm saying? But Paul was determined. He was determined to press on in spite of the many threats he received. He just started his joy over and over and over. So many times he was beaten down. So many times he had to jumpstart his joy in the Lord. Talk to me somehow. So many times he went through many trials and tribulations. He had to keep jumpstarting. Oh yes, his joy in the Lord. And he was able to, he was able to move on. Yes, yes, yes. And he was also able to work while it was still day. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. And I believe he was able to keep his sanity. I believe he was able to keep his sanity. Look at all of what happened to Paul. It's a wonder he didn't drive him out of his mind. Talk to me somebody. It's a wonder he didn't drive him crazy. Talk to me somebody. Yeah, yeah, you see too many trials, troubles, and tribulations come, coming in on you. One right after another seems like they're standing in line waiting to get on you. Talk to me somebody. It can be disturbing, do it? Oh yes, oh yes, but Paul, 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 he stood, he stood his ground, you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, he stood his ground, yes indeed. He, 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 could have, he could have lost his sanity, but he was able to keep his sanity through faith in Christ and self-encouragement. You know, sometimes you've got to know how to encourage yourself. Yeah, yeah, let me see the hands of folk who have had to encourage yourself in this assembly here today. Yes, yes, oh yes, I raise mine, I can raise both of mine. Talk to me somebody, you know what I'm saying? You've got to know how to encourage, you've got to know how to encourage yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. For folk that, for folk that you used to depend on to help you, yeah, yeah, encourage you. Talk to me somebody. Make sometimes go AWOL on Talk to me somebody. 
Then come time, come back and make some time. I'm afraid to call you up and see how you're doing. Talk to me, somebody. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Somebody here need to, need to pray for me this morning. Are y'all gonna pray with me? But you see, Jesus is always a very present help in a time of trouble. For you see, his grace enables us to withstand our hardships. His spirit empowers us to be overcomers. His love and his abiding presence comforts us in our loneliness. His joy causes us to rejoice even in sorrow. And his awesome power stands willing and is able to help us through every one of our difficulties. Oh yes it does. Now with all of these spiritual perks being offered to a Christian I find myself concurring with the hymn writer who wrote, I need thee every hour. Talk to me somebody. I may not be able to get the mother to call. She's gone on home. Yes, yes. I may not be able to get my father to call. He's gone on home. Yes, but I need Jesus every hour. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. I know he is. Talk to me somebody, because I can always call upon him. And he's able to see me through. So many times I've called on him. I said, Jesus, 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 you know the situation I'm in. I need you to come and see about me. I need you. Come and see around me. Any able when I call upon him, I just wait a while. Good God Almighty, I just wait a while. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. The devil may tell me, no, he's not coming. You are just wasting your time waiting on him. He's not coming. But good God Almighty, something on the inside. Spirit said, hold on, hold on, a little while longer, he'll be there, he'll be there, and he'll come when you want him, but he'll be right on time, good God Almighty, he'll come on time, yes he will, he'll lift me up, yes he will, he'll brush me off, he'll take my mind, yes he will. Put it back in me. Tell me to hold on and run on. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. I'm with you. Regardless of who ain't with you, I'm with you. Look out of my eye.
died on Calvary's cross, shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Thank heaven for the blood that washed away our sins, cleansed us, purified us. Thank heaven for the mighty blood of Jesus. Oh, praise us. Took him down, laid him in a bottle too. You know the story. How many times has it been told? Over and over. It still has power. That same old story still has power. Oh, yes, the good. Power to save. Power to give you strength in a weak hour. Power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, they laid him in a public grave. But early Sunday morning, he, he got up. Yes, he did. You believe he got up? I know he got up. He's got up to his feet right now. I know he got up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Doors are open. As our musician gives us a, a selection, the doors are open.
that has germinated and taken root in its glory. Let us be mindful of what the pastor shared with you. Amen. Don't let these words take its keep you. Keep you alive. Let us all stand as we prepare to dismiss ourselves. Loving Father, we come grateful for the love that you have for us, the mercy that you have upon us. We come in your Son's name. His name is Jesus. Jesus, the only begotten Son, of the only true and living God. It's his name that we come in, grateful, appreciative, thankful. Behind you have blessed us on yet another Lord's Day and another one of the Lord's services. Now, Lord, we ask that you would just remember the saints of this church. Thank you, Lord God, for how you saved them. Thank you for the love that you have for me. Continue to overshadow them, Lord God, with your protective care. But they, they are the sheep of your flock, and I know you love them because I love them too. Thank you for all that you have done for this church. And I have come here as you allowed it to remain as a beacon of light in this world of darkness. Continue to keep us. Your kingdom. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, be the rest rule and abide with us now and henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together.